The pro-Putin propaganda within Russia is probably the strongest it's ever been, but it hadn't stopped several hundred people in Russia going out to lay floral tributes for Alexei Navalny. There's been a lot of commentary about how Navalny's legacy is as much a threat to Putin in death as he was in life. Why was the Navalny uh, myth... Uh, why is the Navalny legacy such a threat to Putin, in your view? Well, because Alexei Navalny had a vision, and it was a very simple one, which is that that um, Russia shouldn't be a corrupt country, that that a thousand people shouldn't be buying jets and yachts and, and villas and stealing all the money from the people and having everyone else live in abject poverty where there's no medicine and schools and roads and so on. Mm. And that really was something that everybody felt could, could get their heads around in Russia. That was, that's like the main problem in Russia. Yeah. And so here you had this hopeful young guy, freedom, democracy, and no corruption. That's a very attractive proposition for Russian people. And what about Yulia? Is she as formidable? Well, in a certain way, she's more formidable because, I mean, she has all the same views as her, as her late husband, but she's also a widow who's fighting the injustice of the little old man who murdered her husband. And that's a very powerful, that's a very powerful and persuasive mm. proposition for people. And I think that people will be very attracted to it. And I know, I know that when I see her speaking, I can feel her, yeah. her rage and I can sympathize with it. And I think most people can too. The word hero is, is thrown around too much uh, these days, but I think when you put the word hero before Alexei Navalny's name, it's probably the most fitting um, adage that I've seen in quite some time. I want to end, Bill, by asking you about Putin. I mean, there were... And particularly Tucker Carson and his interview, there's been some commentary around Tucker Carson doing a lot of uh, damage and allowing uh, Putin to um, have this megaphone and, and platform. What is your view on that? Well, you know, I, I, um, uh, I stayed up, uh, it, it was running at 11, it started at 11 p.m. London time on the night that they did it. Yeah. And I was waiting for some kind of d deeply disastrous propaganda exercise. And it was the boringest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Putin went into this two hour monologue droning on about some weird fantasy about a thousand years ago in Russia. Yeah. I couldn't follow it and, and it was hard to stay awake. And, and uh, I mean, and I'm a guy who spends every, you know, minute analyzing Russia. I mean, I mean it was a complete flop. And whatever Tucker Carlson, whatever his fantasy about, um, you know, supporting his, his far right wing, you know, uh, uh, conspiracy theories that Putin was gonna say, Putin went off script completely and just went into this complete idiocy that nobody could follow and nobody cares about. And, and you know, he, he claims he's got 100 million views. Well, I don't know a single person that watched that thing from start to finish because it was just ridiculous. <laughs>